Good morning, everybody. This is Joni at Jonas Software, and I'll be hosting the Frankie Email Marketing Campaign webinar today. Part one was on Tuesday. We learned all about your contacts. Hopefully, you had a chance to go in and create at least one group, which is your proofread, even if you're the only one on it, and hopefully play around with some segments. If not, it's okay. Um, today is all about the campaigns. I'm going to walk you through from start to finish on how to create an actual email campaign and send it out. And we're also going to view responses, which is really your reporting. So are people opening it? Are they clicking on links? We'll walk through that. When we're done today, I'm gonna to send you a separate action item email. So it's gonna look like this, and it's gonna have the resources of information that you'll be able to access. What is Frankie Email Marketing? It's basically taking your information from the Jonas Club Management side of things, your accounting system, and integrating it over to the Frankie Email Marketing. If you add a new contact or make any changes to your contact's information, then it will update automatically in six hours. However, if you need the information to be updated sooner, there is an export process that you can always run a sync manually, which we covered on the previous session. Today, it's all about now using the information so you can create a personalized, professional-looking email. So we have templates that you can choose from, and now we can mail merge those fields that were brought over from the Jonas system so that you can customize the emails with your members' actual information. So now, let's go into today's agenda. We're going to start off on the home screen. We're going to create and send a campaign. We'll look at the reports, and then I'll show you the list of resources. So if uh, people forgot to write it down last time, please write down this for me, clubhouseonline.e2ma.net. That is the URL for every club to log in. Your username is going to be your email address. So that's how you log into your respective site when you are managing your email marketing. Both the email address, your username, and password is going to be case sensitive. So I'm showing you a few screenshots in my slides here right now because it is a brand new first time you're logging in to the site. It's gonna look a little different after you started creating a few things. So if it's completely empty, you have no emails created, this is what the home screen is gonna look like. It's gonna ask you to create a brand new email. Once you start creating, it's gonna slowly transition and look something similar to this. Okay, and then finally, I'm gonna go to my live site now. Once you're live and you've sent out a couple of emails, it will transition and start looking a little bit more like this. So the home tab is the first thing you're gonna see as soon as you log in, and it's just got some statistics. So you kind of know what's going on within the last 30 days. You can see the mailing score, open and clicks, are people actually doing those things? You can go to more insights for even in-depth analysis of everything. So what is this mailing score that we're looking at that I have a 5.3 on? This is taking into account different things, such as the open rates, the click rates, are people sharing your emails, are they opting out? There are other factors as well, but these are the key ones that will uh, be the things that you can kind of control because you would create the segments to have a uh, more specialized audience so that the open rates are better instead of sending it to your entire membership base, for example. The highest score you can actually get is a ton. You would be able to click on these to go into more details. You can also see a year to date what has been sent, number of active contacts and workflows. Down below are the emails that you've actually sent and you can see the mailing score for each campaign itself and the stats underneath. If you actually click on any of these campaigns, it will take you into the reporting area. And in this program, they are referred to as responses. There's gonna be many ways for you to get into the responses, but that's not my focus right now. I just wanna get you right in and starting to create a campaign. There's also different areas that you can create a campaign as well. So right in the top right-hand corner, you can see create a new campaign. I'm gonna click on campaigns at the very top. And when you do that, it will take you to, on the left-hand side, the emails area. I'm gonna zoom in for everybody to see better. And campaigns or emails are separated into different tabs. So we have a draft, scheduled, sent, automated, and shared. 
Drafts are campaigns that you have started creating, but they're not quite ready to be sent out yet. Maybe you're missing some text from another department, maybe you're missing a picture or hyperlink, so that's where it will sit in the drafts area. Now, I'm not gonna go through the details of the campaigns right now, because we wanna create one together. So let's start in the Create New Campaign button up at the very top. And we'll talk about uh, all those different things afterwards. So regular email is already selected for you. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is name your campaign. I like naming them with the date, because that way I can easily find them. The good news is this name is just an internal name. So your members are never gonna see this campaign name that you're creating. Then you hit continue at the bottom. At this point, there's different ways for you to start your campaign. Starting in the top right-hand corner, you can start from scratch. It's basically a clean slate of paper and you design the campaign the way you want to. On the left-hand side though, there are a few items, starting with my gallery. There are recent emails that I've recently sent out, so it'll remind you what you did. If you wanna use the exact same one, you can easily hover over it and select which template you would like to use. There are my templates. So what my templates are is if your club sends out newsletters on a regular basis, maybe a dining specific or golf specific campaign once a week or quarterly, and you have a certain layout you wanna use, once you've created and customized your template with your logo and contact information, you can save it as a template. So that going forward, when you need it a month from now, you don't have to start from scratch. You basically grab it from my templates. And at that point, you can just change up uh, maybe a picture or a few lines of text, and you're ready to go to send it out. So all you need to do once it's saved in the My Templates area, you can start it, you can rename it, or you can delete it because you don't like this template anymore. Share templates. I have a few extra ones that you may not have, but what I wanted to point out is you should have, let me scroll up a bit, this one here. It's called Welcome to the Club with CHO, which stands for Clubhouse Online Registration. So some clubs have the website with us, Clubhouse Online, and we've got a welcome campaign. So actually I'm gonna open up another tab so you can see it a little better. So we've already got it set up for you. And all you have to do is replace your logo, your club name, because maybe you want to introduce your members to using the new website. Remember that subscription button that we were talking about the other day? Let me show you the email. It's found at the very bottom saying manage your preferences. So your members may miss this. They don't scroll all the way down to the bottom. What we've done is in this template, we have a nice button right at the middle of your page called update subscriptions. So that way they can choose between the topics they're interested, in, whether it's golf, newsletter, social, et cetera. But down below is actually your registration process. So let me zoom in again that you can send to your members. You're about to launch the website with us, and what we have is put in place your mail merge codes. So this way, your members would already be aware of the exact way to add their member number, first name, and last name to be validated to use the new Clubhouse Online website. You don't have to keep every component in our template, but at least we've got you started, and you're more than welcome to use and edit what we find in this share template. Welcome to the club with Cho registration. If for any reason, if you log in and you do not see this template, please contact your project coordinator or let us know so that we can get that added into your shared templates area. And then finally, we have a sample gallery. So in here, there are many areas that you can go into. So maybe you have an announcement, you can come here and get ideas. When you choose something from the gallery, one thing to note is there's certain things that you can change, obviously like your logo, and you can replace the images with those placeholders, you can change up the text, but there's certain things that you will not be able to change. So for example, you can see how there's two blue bars at the bottom in this Emma test. You can't get rid of the double bar, but you will have the capability of changing it from a blue to maybe a, a green. So you can change the colors, but there's certain things that you won't be able to change, some of these wood grains. 
all the templates are responsive. So what that means is not only can your members open an email on a desktop computer, we have the conveniences of tablets and our phones right now. So it will scale the information accordingly. So for example, you see here on this Hemingway, it's got two columns. Anything in the column number two on a phone, smartphone, will now have all the information shifted underneath everything in column one. So in the preview area, I'll try to illustrate that as well later on. But those are the templates that are in announcements. You can go to any of these areas, welcome, events, and choose something. Choose this welcome three template today to demonstrate. Click start here and you've just selected a template. Now, if you chose a template and you don't like it, you can't go back and change it. All you're gonna do is you can close out of here and start over again, and then choose a different template. June 10th is what I named the campaign, so you can always rename it. So maybe this was my June 10th newsletter that I was working on. Remember, it's an internal name. Click rename, and that will save the name change for you. The middle section that I'm in right now is what we call the canvas. Now, if I hover over the pieces here, you can see a little yellow box that is hovering over each of these little sections. So these are actually blocks, okay? So every section that I go over. Now you see these four buttons? These aren't the regular blocks because you notice when I hover over these yellow uh, boxes, there's a four directional arrow, there's a gear icon, there's this uh, box with the plus sign and a trash can shows up, but it doesn't for arrivals or sale. So these four at the bottom are built into the template, so I can't get rid of them, but I can always get rid of one of these boxes here. So our best sellers, if I don't like it, I can hit the delete trash can and I can get rid of it. Now on the left hand side, are the actual blocks that you can choose from. And notice when I hover one, over one of them, it says click and drag to add the image block onto your canvas, which is the section in the middle. It's a simple click. And notice all the yellow bars that say drop here. As soon as I let go when it turns green, that's potentially where my image that I've got holding on to right now is gonna be dropped. So if I want it up at the very top, so now I have an area that I can easily put in an image. But I'm not gonna start off with that. I'm gonna close this one out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a left block here. What this is saying is, let's show you this one. There's a picture on the left and there's text on the right-hand side. Now, I showed you how to click and drag and delete. I'm gonna show you how you can easily move pieces around. So even though we chose this nice template, you can still definitely change it up. So now if I hit the directional arrows, what if I wanted it under the 40% button? Oops, I let go too early, but I moved it under last chance here. So that's how you can easily click and drag to reposition a piece of your email. Next thing I wanna do is show you the gear icon right here. There are block styles and options that you can customize in here as well. Once you hit the gear icon on the left, it has a little pop-up with styles and settings. What this allows you to do is make changes in that particular block highlighted in the yellow right now. So when I hit background, I can now choose a color for that particular block. So mind you, I'm not a graphic designer. I'm gonna be choosing colors and items just so that it stands out and it's easy for you to see today. So you can basically choose any color in here. If you knew your RGB color code, you could have thrown in a specific number. If you had the hex code, is which is how websites identify color, you could also throw in your specific hex code. So if there's a certain shade of blue your club uses for marketing purposes, throw it in. Or to be more specific, you can show the spectrum. Now you can choose a specific shade of blue out of all of these options in here. So then all you're gonna do is, so I'm just gonna get out of here, click out uh, anywhere down here, is margin. What if you wanted to add some spacing, white space, between that colored block and the edge of your email? Padding is taking your text and pushing it closer to the edge. So you're creating less space to the edge. 
depending what you're working on, sometimes you need to adjust the margin padding. Sometimes you just leave it. Border. Did you want to add a border around this particular headline text that we're in? So what you would do first is decide what kind of a border do you want? Solid, dotted, dashed, or double? So let's say you wanted a dotted line. What color do you want the line to be? You have the same color choices. So let's just make it red. And you obviously need to put in the thickness of the line. Zero is no line, but as you drag, <laughs> we have a really big dotted line. Now it looks like a coupon or something. <laughs> so depending on what you're working on, you may or may not need a line. But remember, zero means there will be no line. So even if you've chosen something, how come it's not showing up? It's because you left it as zero. Now, you can actually be more specific, meaning if you click the gear icon down here, you can decide on the margin, it's measured in pixels, if you didn't want it equal. Maybe you wanted the padding at the top to be five instead of 20, and the bottom to be five as well. So this is how you can change it for the information around it. That is the styles area that we're working on, and there's also settings. Settings is now deciding, do you actually want the text block or do you want to change this into picture only, on or off? So then you have the images. Do you want the image on or off? If you have an image, you can increase the count. You can decide if you wanted it on the left, right, or center. One thing to note is when you're in a block and you choose center, the image is always going to be above text. If you wanted the picture underneath, then just grab a new content block on the left-hand side and place it underneath, and that way you can have images appearing under your text. If you wanted to put in captions, you can turn that on as well. So if I turn on captions, maybe you wanted to uh, introduce a new entree at the club and explain what it is. So now you can explain or a winner of a competition. You can put the winner's name and add the caption easily without grabbing a separate text box. If you don't need it, then of course you can turn off the captions. Then we have a button. Maybe you wanted a button right in this block. You can do that as well. So I'm going to leave the button off because we're going to do the button separately later. I'm going to change it back to left. So what I'm going to do is once you click out of this block on the left-hand side, anywhere on your canvas, it removes it. Now remember, every single block with the yellow box around it has its own set of block styles and options. The last one I'm going to talk about is text pasting. What text pasting does is when you click on it, you want to choose the one called Paste Without Styles. If you've worked with other content editors or email programs before, is you're probably familiar with something called Paste as Plain Text. The reason why is things like Microsoft Word, which I've just jumped over to, has hidden code that you cannot see when you do your bold, your italics, hyperlinks, and things like that. In order to make sure when your email goes out, it doesn't conflict with any coding that's within the Frankie Email Marketing Program, we want to make sure you paste as plain text. So I'm just going to copy this text because in the end, you want to save time. So all you're going to do is Control C to copy. Let's go back to our campaign here. So I've chosen Paste Without Styles and Done. And now all you have to do is put your cursor, oops, sorry, I hit the images by mistake. Put your cursor in the box, and at that point, figure out where you want it to go. Sorry, I'm in the header area, so let's do it down here. You're just gonna do a Control V, or you can choose Paste, or even Paste as plain text if you do a right mouse click. So I usually like to do Control V on my keyboard, and you can see now it's stripped out everything that I had in my Word document. See, there's no red, there's no blue, no italics, bold. Everything has been stripped out. So the idea is we want you to make sure before you paste anything in from another source to choose text pasting, use paste without styles. The good news is once you do this on one of the blocks within your campaign, it's going to know and 
recognize that's probably what you want to do throughout your entire campaign. So you don't have to do paste without styles for every single block that you've added in. So I'm just going to get rid of this picture so we can see the text a little better. I'm going to click out of this block on the right hand side. And I want you to notice there's no content editor toolbar at the top. As soon as I click in a box that is for text, it does appear. Your bold, your italics, your fonts. So only these fonts available here can be used. You can't add additional fonts, your size, your color. So your regular editor tools. Then in here, let's start building our campaign. So for example, you want to, let's get rid of that headline text. You can have dear members, which is great, but you want to utilize all the information that you brought over from your Jonas system. So what you can do is now customize it using this icon here at the top. I'm going to zoom in one more time, but at that point, my uh, icons here might shift in position. But I want everybody to see a little better. All right. So I see it was up here. It's now shifted because I zoomed in. So you're looking for the insert icon. When you insert, you're going to choose the second item called personalization. Once you choose personalization, two things happen it automatically added in square brackets a little piece of code for you. And now I actually have another drop down underneath. First name is assuming what you want to put in the mail merge. So now it's gonna say something like, Dear Joni, when the email goes out. If that's what you want, perfect. But I need you to fill in this box here beside it called a placeholder. If for any reason in your accounting system, the first name field was empty, you don't want the email to go out and just say, dear blank. So we need a placeholder. For any reason it's empty, let's put in the word member. So now it will say, dear member. After the code is added in, just click out of it and you'll see this bar disappear. If you click anywhere within these square brackets, it will drop down so you can come back and edit. Now make sure once you're done to add any commas or anything that you want or spaces between the mail merge fields. Now, I don't wanna just say their first name. I actually wanna put in their title, for example. So let's click in here and choose from the fields, remember the 28 fields that you potentially brought over from your accounting system. So now it doesn't make sense to say, dear member, it might make more sense to say something like, dear Mr. or Mrs. if for any reason the title field was empty. So now I'm gonna hit a space bar because now title would match up better with the last name. So you do it one more time. Insert, personalization, choose the last name, and I'm gonna use the word member as my placeholder as well. Now it looks weird, it's dropped down to the second line because I zoomed in so that everybody can see a little better, but really it's just gonna be the title and last name of your member when the email goes out. It's just the extra code that you see right now. now remember, if you wanna style something, you can always change the sizing. So if you wanted a uh, welcome to the club to be a little bit bigger, you can go ahead and choose and change your colors as well using your options right here. So that is a mail merge that I just showed you how to do. And the next thing I wanna move on to is the hyperlinks. These are the three that I'll be showing you how to do today. The steps are pretty much the same. All you're gonna start off with is typing the text that you want to be hyperlinked. So a lot of clubs are launching their new website with us or you wanna land them on a particular page on your site. So you type up your website address and highlight the text. Once you highlight it, it's the button beside insert, this chain link icon, insert link. When you click on the chain link, what's gonna happen is you actually have the tabs on top. Are you linking a URL, an email address, or a document? So let's start off with the URL. At this point here, you would type in the club's website address. Or personally, I would open up in a new tab your club's website. I would land on the page you actually want to see, and I would copy it. Because sometimes I type in a hurry and I have typing mistakes. So when you copy the URL and paste it, you're ensuring they're going to land on the right page. So it's up to you if you want to type it or copy and paste that I usually do. Next are link name. 
There is tracking and reporting. So when we go into the responses area, you can easily see the statistics of who has clicked on this link to get to the EAT page. The URL is pretty self-explanatory, but if you wanted to relabel it and say EAT link on website, because that is easier for you to read than an actual website address, it's optional for you to add the link name. A tooltip is, as it's indicating here, it shows text when your member hovers over our hyperlink. So maybe you want them to action on something. Maybe you want them to register now or register today, right? To entice them to do an action. Tooltip is also optional. And that's all you really need to fill out. So really, it's just the URL field and click on insert. When we chose a template, it possibly chose not to underline the hyperlinks. Let's just change the color here so we can easily see it. Okay, so you can always change it up. If you think your members still like the underlined feel, you can come back and link it. But how do you know this is linked versus this info? When I click on the URL for the club, I want you to notice under insert, another bar drops down. It's now telling me to edit link or remove link. So if you're not sure if you've linked it to the right spot, you can go back to edit link, and then you can see everything that we just did. So I'm not changing anything, I'm just gonna cancel out of here. And notice when I hover over, there's that tooltip. It says register now. But how do you test the link? How do you know that you linked it to the right spot? You cannot test it while you're in the edit mode. Up in the top right corner, there is a preview mode. So later on, once we finish adding everything to the campaign, we'll go to the preview section. And at that point, you can test all your links and send it out as a test. And then finally, send it out to your entire audience that you've grouped or have in a segment. So the next hyperlink that you might want to do is an email. So it's always good to include contact information pertaining to that particular campaign. Um, or easy way for them to reach out. Maybe you wanted your uh, GM's email address or your food and beverage manager. Once you type in the text for it to be linked, you're gonna hit that same chain link icon to insert the link, move over to the email address tab at the top, and simply type in the person's email address that you wanna be automatically populated when your member clicks on that info at club.com. Subject line is what I would suggest you add in here so that when your person on the receiving end of this info email address easily knows what they are inquiring about. So we can say June 10th newsletter questions. Link name, you don't have to. Tooltip if you wanted them to have some text show up. So usually for an email, I don't do the tooltip. I usually like the email and the subject line. So now you just created an email link. And as I said, this template has a uh, different color. So you can make it a completely different color if you wanted to. So I'm just trying to make things stand out for you here. But again, I'm not the best at choosing the best colors for design purposes. The last thing that you probably want to link to is something like a PDF a poster registration form. Now, I'm calling it a PDF link uh, because we don't send attachments when you are using this email marketing program. Why? Because when you send out emails and there is an attachment, it takes up a lot of room in your recipient's inbox. Any documents that you have, we recommend you save it as a PDF instead of even Word or Excel to be sent out because not everybody has Microsoft, so a PDF is an easier way for them to access it. Highlight the words that you wanna link. So I think you got the pattern now. Highlight chain link, document. So from here, it will easily show you all the PDFs that you have actually uploaded into the Frankie email marketing system previously. If the newsletter or menu that you wanted to use for June is still sitting on your computer, then what you would do is use the upload button right here on the right hand side. At this point, it's gonna take you to your computer. Go ahead and choose your pictures, the PDF folder, and you're gonna choose the menu that you wanna use. So as you saw, I do have a couple of those already. Let's try my March newsletter. I don't think that one was in the list. And you open it. 
whatever you choose, it's going to assume that's the one you want to use. So that's why my March newsletter is selected. Link name tooltip is optional and insert. So now you just created a link for the dining menu. So let's just choose another color again so you can easily see it. So it's a dark blue. So that's how you would create a hyperlink. Maybe they just saw it's a different color. They don't realize that these things are actually hyperlinks. Now people are using buttons because buttons are a lot more attractive and it draws their interest and they're more likely to click on it. So let's use this save 40% button or here, let me show you how to add one anywhere you like. So let's come back up here. I'm gonna add it to the top so you can easily see it. So click the button on the left-hand side and drag and drop it. Let's just do it under last chance. And what it does, it jumps into the properties for you to edit the button. You can easily rename it. So let's call it our menu. Change the font, the color of the text, the link. But what's going on now? I don't have those same options easily to link it. So let's go through those three examples again. If you want to link to a website, super easy. Go to your website, grab the link, paste it in. Done. What if you wanted to do an email link? I don't have those separate fields this time. So I have a little piece of code. Sorry, I don't have this readily available to uh, send to you guys, but this is the code right here. You need the mail to colon and you replace in yellow the person's email address. If you wanted a subject line, you would replace it in that section there that I have highlighted in yellow. You could do a phone number if you wanted to as well. What if you wanted to link to a PDF? I didn't have an easy upload button to get the PDF. So what you need to do is make your way to the storage of all your PDFs. There's a section called documents and you're gonna have to copy it and bring it over. So let me show you that right now. So let me close out of here for a second. So my button, I've changed the color, but let me open in a new tab. Opening a new tab so I don't lose everything that we've done already. So once I have the new tab open, I'm going into campaigns. So what this is on the left hand side, earlier we were in emails, I have two sections. I have images and I have documents. Documents are any files and PDFs. You can see that March newsletter we did together earlier has been uploaded. So if I wanna use that exact same document or maybe I wanna use my dining menu PDF because it was a menu button, I just have to scroll over to the right-hand side and click the triangle and it has three options. I can download it onto my computer because maybe I didn't have it on my computer and I wanted it. I can copy the link. So that's what we need to do for this task. Once you copy the link, it's just copied. You can't really see it. And that third option was delete. Maybe you don't need this PDF anymore. Now keep in mind, if you did send an email blast with this particular PDF, if you delete it and somebody still has that email, you now just created a broken link. Okay, so just be cautious. If you delete anything in here, it can affect emails that you've already sent out. And also if you didn't upload the correct menu yet, here's your upload button and you go through the same motions to upload it so it's accessible in your campaign. The key here is if you wanna link a button, make your way to campaigns at the top, documents on the left, find your PDF and choose copy link. Once you've copied the link, you're gonna make your way back to this screen, click on your button, and now you can control V to paste your link. You know it's the right one because it ends in dining menu, that PDF. Everything in front, don't worry about it. This is basically the file path of where that document was saved. So that's how you would do a PDF link. Now remember I said there is the opportunity of creating a nice button to help your members manage your preferences instead of using the footer at the very bottom. Here's a little piece of code, whoops, this one, that you can use. It's this square bracket here with the percent sign, manage underscore URL space percent sign, square bracket. All you would do is grab this and you would have put it in there. 
and that would have linked it to manage preferences as a button for you. So I'm just gonna leave that as my menu. That's where I'm gonna link it to. You can change the size of the button, small, medium, large. Instead of a rounded shape, you can have a pill shape. You can see in the preview here, or even a square button. You can position left, center, or right. You can even change the background color of your button. If you scroll down this pop-up because I zoomed in, I gotta zoom out. <laughs> there is your save button. So now it knows that my button for the menu is all done. A few extra steps when you're linking the button because it doesn't conveniently have a chain link icon for you to choose between URL, email address, and document. Up to the top where there is a logo placeholder. Remember we chose a template today? So let's go to the logo. It takes you into the images area within the campaign. And what it's doing is listing my library of all my images. Folders here can be created for you to better organize your pictures. You don't have to create them. If you wanted to create it, it's super easy. Down at the very bottom, there's an add folder button. For training purposes, I'm gonna call it June 10th, but you would have called it something like golf, dining, newsletters, so you can easily locate things to use. So there's my June 10th folder, and obviously nothing is in it. So if I wanted to, for example, put my logo or any pictures in, I just check the little box here and buttons show up to add to folder. I can choose a whole bunch of things. And then it's asking me which folder I would like to add it to. So let's just add it to June 10th. So basically those three pictures now, I can easily find them in June 10th in the future. Now, it's just kind of made a copy of these pictures into the folder. So if I go to May 27th, you can see it shows similar pictures. <laughs> but in here, when I hover over the little triangle beside May 27th, you can see I can either rename it or I can delete it. When I delete May 27th, all it's doing is deleting the folder. My bingo, my logo pictures are still accessible in the all images. So I'm gonna get rid of May 27th because I don't need it. And that's what it tells you here as well. Now, how do you upload a picture? To upload a picture, the upload button's in the top right-hand corner. You can see the file types, JPEG, PNG, and GIF formats. We suggest nothing bigger than 25 megabytes. Because if you put something very high quality in here, you can imagine it's gonna take a long time for it to load. Once you get a picture off the camera, we suggest you edit, crop it, rename it, resize it to nothing larger than 1,280 pixels wide, as it says. If it's bigger, it's gonna be resized. Once you hit the upload button, go to your computer, you go ahead and locate the image that you want to use, and that's it. So let's say you want that pattern open. I actually had it there already. <laughs> and now it's uploaded, and it automatically selected that picture, because when you upload, it assumes that's the picture you want to use. So there it is in my campaign. Now, here's something I always do in error. So I'm going to share this uh, tip with you here. I see the picture, I say it looks great, and I always click on my canvas. And look what happens, it's gone. So if anybody noticed, there was a little pop-up on the left-hand side, so let's go back in there. So when you select a picture on the left, there's a pop-up. You need to hit save if you actually want this pattern to be in your actual email. If you chose the wrong picture, you can hit replace image right at the top here. Because it's a logo, let's go ahead and choose this here instead. And there's a few other options that you can do. Link, did you want this logo to link to your actual website? So in that case, you can always go to your website. Maybe you only want them to land on the home page this time instead of the eat page and paste the link. Alt text stands for alternate text. What this does is for any reason your members have turned off images in their email program using speech readers so that it can dictate what the image is all about. So you can say logo for club that looks like a house. So this is in the content tab. Remember the link is optional. The alt tags I highly recommend. Style tab at the top does allow you to do minor edits. So what you can do is you can use the slider here and you can see on my canvas, the size of the logo is scaling proportionately. 
You do also have the ability to put in the size yourself. So if I change one thing, it changes the height as well. You can edit the image, but I don't have a lot of tools in here. So that's why I suggested you edit, crop, rename, resize your pictures before you upload it. The only other thing you need to be aware of is if I do make any changes in here, let's say I only wanted this or whatever reason, I didn't want the text, I only want the logo, then I can orientate it, flip it over and apply. It just overrode the original photo that I have saved in that image area. You do need to edit, maybe you wanna download it on your computer first and then make your edits and re-upload the new version. So I'm just gonna hit cancel here. So now that I've got things sorted out with my image, I've got my link, my text, I'm now ready to hit the save button. And now my image stays. Whereas when I clicked on the canvas, it disappeared on me. I still have the ability to go back and edit by clicking on it and replacing it completely. Or I can use the trash can and delete the logo because I actually didn't want it placed here with the template that I had selected. If I don't need this free shipping, I can just zero it out. I can't quite get rid of this box, but because it's part of the template, I can zero out. So that's how you can insert an image anywhere in your campaign. And I'm just gonna get rid of a whole bunch of stuff here because my email's getting kind of long. But yeah, these are the things you can end up your email in and you can easily move things about. And remember, if you wanted to keep what you had created here and you wanted uh, another version, maybe explaining something for your females versus the males at the club, there's certain information, but slightly different because of uh, different hours that they play, things like that, why not just copy it? So now you have a copied block that looks exactly the same and you just have to edit a few sentences or the pictures within that block. Remember, if you don't need it copied, that block, just delete it. One more thing about images. You remember how for the dining menu, when we created this button, I had to go into a different area to grab the URL? Well, in that area, let's go to that tab. I also have an images tab. It's oriented a little differently from what we just saw, but this is your storage for all the pictures that you've ever uploaded so you can use in any Frankie email marketing campaigns in the future. With this, what you can see is it doesn't have the folders. You can still upload all the images, but it just saves into that all images area. So if you ever wanna group them into particular folders, you have to do it while you're within a campaign. This area is good because what if you've got the pictures, but your fellow staff member hasn't figured out which campaign to use. So instead of uh, forgetting uh, where you put the picture, why not just upload it in here and your other staff can find it when they're ready to work on the campaign. Your choices are the same as the documents in the PDF. You can download it to your computer because then you want to properly edit using another program. You can copy the link and you can delete it if you don't need it anymore because you had the wrong version. That's how you can upload pictures ahead of time. Those are the key things in the campaign that I wanted to show you. Copy and pasting, pictures, hyperlinks. On the left-hand side, remember, you have a lot of blocks that you can click and drag to choose from. I'm not gonna go through all of those today. Maybe you had a video. You just have to grab your YouTube or Vimeo URL. You throw it in there. Text, you can choose. So that's my registration video. How do you want it to show up? You can give it a little space, and that's it. There's your video. If you don't need the video, delete it. Follow another one I wanna show you. This is if you have social media, all you have to do is put in the proper extension for the respective link. Facebook, put in your club name and it will throw in a Facebook link. Maybe you have LinkedIn, you can throw that in. You can choose, do you like square or circle shaped icons? Did you want black and white? So these are the things that you can easily set up, but I cannot change the order. So what I mean by that is I can't have the LinkedIn logo show up before Facebook. It's always gonna be oriented in the order it appears in here, but you can change the size and orientation though, and position. 
that's how you can add your social media if you wanted to. At the bottom here, remember if you want to keep this, you can. If you don't need this, then you can delete it because it was a placeholder. Otherwise, you can go in and replace the images with something you want instead. And these buttons I can't change. So what you can do though is you can replace it. Maybe you have a golf page. You can still hyperlink it because it's just a text box. And you can just go ahead and change all these different things to topics that maybe you have. So I'm just going to relabel. I'm not going to go through and do all the links for them. At the very bottom, again, we chose a template. That's why it says terms and conditions. If you want to say something down here, you can. If you have nothing, then just zero it out because then it looks a little better. Share this email. Now we're looking in the footer. This is not your social media that I showed you earlier using the follow content block. This is your member or the recipient saying, do I want to share this email for the newsletter to other people? Honestly, I would uncheck all of these because if they wanted to uh, share it onto Facebook, that's where they would click on that Facebook if you had kept it enabled. Okay, so it's them sharing it onto their Facebook is what it's trying to say. Once I remove all four of these, the word select sharing doesn't appear. So if you look at my footer, it doesn't say it because I already took them all out. Okay, because if they want to email to a friend, they'll just hit forward or something within their email program. You don't really need that button at the bottom to let them share. We cannot change anything in this footer area. It's kind of set in stone. The only thing that will be changed for you is your club's address information. And when the email goes out, that person's email will be populated in there. But I cannot reword anything in here. View this email online is already set up. So for any reason your member cannot view it in their inbox, it will open up the details that we created in our campaign today up here. Let's get rid of that 40%. And in a browser, whatever they have defaulted. So let's get rid of that. Okay, so yeah, I'm just trying to clean up the email a little bit. So now you can really see how you can really customize this template. We took an existing one and we've pretty much uh, revamped it now. Now, remember we chose the template? Up at the top here, I have all these other buttons. Columns, backdrop, accent, lots of different things. So what this does now is I can change the layout. This layout was actually designed with one column that we selected. If you wanted to make this a equal to column template, oops, keeps choosing the social media. Now I just, again, change the look of my campaign. Doesn't even look like the original template we chose in the first place. So now it's kind of guessing where I want things to be positioned if I made it a two column looking campaign. I could have made it a three column as well. And now I can even change the background color. So if I change this, now you see the background has changed. Then I have the accent at the top because when I chose this, there was this little accent bar. So if I want to change that to something else, where's that, sorry, further up here actually, didn't go far enough, but that accent bar is what you can control and change it to something else but I can't get rid of that bar. So if you wanted to blend it in, you'd make it the same color as the backdrop. Then you've got, there's the content bar. You can change the color of the left column. You can add a border. So all sorts of things. Again, I'm just choosing things. We can see it changing up on us. So this is how you can easily, whoops, change all of these different areas. Even the buttons down at the very bottom. If I didn't want that color, I wanted like something. What's going on here? Oh, red it is still. So now if I scroll on down, you can see I changed the color of one of the buttons. And then if you make your way down to the bottom, there's the uh, footer as well. If I want to change the footer color instead of this dark brown color, you can change it up. So that's how you can really move information around. So I'm just going to call this column two because I'm about to go into the preview area so you guys can see things um, in the preview. But before I do that, let's take a look at the buttons up here. Save, if anybody's noticed, it's been auto-saving for us. And the revert to, it saves for you pretty much every 15 seconds. 
So honestly, I don't keep track of what I do every 15 seconds if I made a save. So if we went back in time, maybe like 1027, maybe that's when we were working on the hyperlinks. I'm not sure. <laughs> so it does auto save for you. But before I leave, I always like to hit the save button myself. But it would revert back to what you had at exactly 1027. But it's just hard to remember <laughs> what I actually had with all the different things I did in between. Also, if you want, you can save it as a copy because maybe you're doing something for you be uh, adults at the club and you have different hours for the children or senior. So you can always copy and then just change the text or pictures accordingly. You can save as a template. So if this is something you're going to be using every month for your newsletter, all you have to do then is replace a few things instead of everything with the logo and the uh, contact email for your staff member. Or you can just save and close because you're going for lunch. Then we have the preview, which is where we're going to go to right now. And in the preview, what this allows you to do is view it without those uh, boxes or lines, and you can see it on a desktop. Here you can actually test your hyperlinks. So if you want to make sure that these are linked correctly, you can click on them. So I'm not sure if my email's opening when I clicked on that, but that's my eat page. So that's working. There you go. So there's my two field populated and the subject line that I said for June 10th newsletters. Let's close that and my dining menu. So I chose the newsletter <laughs> when I did it the first time around. So obviously, oops, I chose the wrong link. I have to go back and redo it. But this is where you want to do all your testing and make sure everything is linked correctly and these things down here. You can change your device. So now that I'm on a smartphone, what it's done is it's made it responsive for me. So that's why I named something column two earlier. Column two information shows up underneath everything that was in column one. I can get an idea of what it will look like when your members view it on a different device or maybe they have a tablet. So I get an idea of what it's going to look like, or you can even use the three dots and put in the device size that you want to check it out on. If everything looks good and good to go, remember you can see the um, tooltip, the register now we did, then you can hit back to editor. Make your necessary changes. So column two doesn't look good at all. Maybe you want to change it back to a one column email now but because it put in placeholders for you, you probably want to get rid of these extra blocks that was added in for you. That's how you can preview. Highly recommend you send a test uh, in the beginning so you get the hang of things before it goes out to your entire membership base. So this is where it either goes out to just yourself or a handful of staff to proofread, and that's why we suggest you created that group. It also tells you a max of 10 recipients. So you can either start typing the person's email address, but you can see I have a segment or group that I created with just myself. I wanted to go to my trainer one, sorry, wrong one. I wanna to go to my trainers. And in here, you just need to put in the subject line. So we can call it June newsletter. At the top, it says the word test is going to be added in front of the subject line. So I don't actually have to type the word test, it will do it for me. So that way you know when you get it in your inbox. Everything else should be pre-populated for you. your sender name, uh, the sender email, and that's all you really need. If there's a message you specifically want to say, please check the links or please check the hours and the prices, you can tell your colleague the instructions that you want them to do when they get this email. Otherwise, you can leave it empty and send now at the top. It should show up in my inbox. One second. So there's my email. So because my Outlook actually adds an extra thing called marketing, you probably wouldn't get this marketing in square brackets. There's the word test that got added in automatically because it was a test email. And here's a reason why you want to make sure you put that alternate text for the pictures. If for any reason my Outlook does have images turned off, you have all these red X's that will display indicating here. Let me zoom in for everybody. One second. It's a little better. So it's still hard to see, but you can see I typed the word logo uh, for club that looks like a house. Remember I did that earlier? So that's where it comes in handy. Or if it's a speech reader, it will read it out and dictate it to the person if they can't see the images. 
Also, I forgot to mention, please try not to make your email one giant image. I've seen clubs do it before where they said, oh, I have a beautiful poster. Everything's laid out the way I want. I just took a screenshot of that poster and plopped it right into the canvas of the email. And they didn't bother typing or copy and pasting anything out uh, as we did here today. If you do a picture as your entire email, guess what happens? It's gonna have a giant red and white X here if your member has images turned off and they don't bother doing the steps as it instructs to right mouse click and download the pictures. Now it shows up and along with any other picture that I might have had. So try not to do your email as one giant picture. So here you can go ahead and test everything again if you wanted to directly from your inbox. So that's my newsletter. Oops, we forgot to change the menu. So you can always go back now and make sure you relink your information so it goes to the right spot. So let's go ahead and choose my dining menu and insert. So now it's replaced. I can save it manually or it will auto save for you. And I'm ready to review and send. Review and send. This is where you choose your audience. And this is why we recommend you create your groups and segments already. So there's three ways to choose your recipients. I can come in here and start typing somebody's email because maybe I've never added them before. But remember, there's always room for error when you're typing an email. So that's why we usually recommend you hit the person icon on the right hand side instead and choose from your groups, your segments or your subscriptions. The segments. You can come in here and choose, where's the one we did together, our June 8th. You can even go to our groups because we did some June 8th the other day. Let's go choose June 8th. You can choose as many items as you want. Let me just get rid of this. Now the subscriptions, it's already done for you, assuming you want to do one for just the newsletters, the dining. The other day when I were in the segments, I did show you how to create the subscription segment as well. So maybe that's what's confusing uh, that one club right now is in addition to subscriptions already pre-created for you, I showed you how to create the subscription on your own. But the reason why I did that is because you could have added another value. I want to send it out to people that are female and also said yes to the newsletter subscription. If you don't need to add a second criteria, you don't really need to do anything because you just choose subscriptions from here itself. And that's where they opt in and out on their own if I wanted newsletters. Now, what's kind of neat about this program is I just chose four different things. Maybe you want to exclude a particular segment. So maybe you want to take out people that had business emails. So if they're in here, but any of them had business emails, we're not going to send it to those people. And the system's smart enough that it only goes out once. So if I was on the June 8th and the newsletter, I'm not going to get the email twice. So honestly, I don't want to send it to all these people that I randomly selected. So I'm not going to exclude anybody. I'm going to get rid of all these people and I'm going to go back to my groups and I'm going to choose my trainers. So I only want it to go out to two people right now. Subject line, June newsletter usually copies what you had done in the preview. So at this point, you can leave it as June newsletter. What I find a lot of clubs like to do is actually put the club name so that the recipient knows whose newsletter it is from June. So you can put in the anything you want in this area. Next, you have the sender name. You can say, uh, again, your club name. Maybe you want it specifically come from your GM's name. You can decide what you want to put as a sender name. Sender email is again a valid email address at the club is what I would recommend you put. And ideally you want a person's email address. Info is nice and generic, but um, there's a lot of spammers out there. So to be safe, it's probably better to have something maybe even like a front desk or an actual person's name is always a good sender email address. When people hit reply, do you want it to go back to the front desk person? or do you want them to send it to somebody else? So set a separate reply to. So it's coming from front desk, but I want them to reply to me specifically if they have any questions by hitting reply at the top instead of any hyperlinks you had in the body of the message. 
finally, when do you want to send this? You can send it immediately right now, or you can schedule it for later. And so just on the left-hand side, it kind of gives you a little preview of what the email looks like. And on the right-hand side, while you're doing a quick skim of the email, you notice uh, something's wrong, you can always go back to the editor, preview, and save as well. Schedule for later. You're basically going to choose the date you want this to go out. So maybe I want it to go out on Saturday at what time? When you choose the time, notice the time zone. I'm in the Eastern time zone. If your club belongs to another time zone, it should represent CST, PST respectively. So what I'm saying is when you're setting up the date and time, you don't have to do any calculation and say, oh, well, I'm PST, I have to count three hours back <laughs> and do the math. It should be the right time zone. If it's the wrong time zone here, then let us know and then we'll correct it in your setup itself. Notify email. Since I'm setting this out on Saturday, the question is, do I want an email to me saying that we just sent out this email at Saturday, 11.15 a.m.? Just kind of a reminder if you're really future dating something far out. But if you don't need that email, you do not need to type it in, and then you'll schedule it. Now, honestly, I don't want to schedule it because I'm going to cancel because I want to show you how it will go out to anyone that you selected in either the group, the segment, or subscription. So we're going to send it now. But please, please double check the links, the pictures, the spelling in your preview, because once I hit the send now button, it's gone. I cannot retract it. Okay, so make sure you double, triple check, especially in the beginning, so you kind of get the hang of things, because once you hit send now, it's going out to everybody that you had selected as your contacts. And that's it. You just sent out an email campaign. It does say it takes about 30 minutes. So what that means is basically some members could potentially get the email before other people receive it. See the button here, you can see the response, which is your reporting. Uh, it could take some time for it to process the current date up to 24 hours. So what I wanna do now is actually go to the campaigns area, talk about the different options in the table. And sorry, the email did come through, so I'll just bring it over so you guys can see. So this time it just doesn't have the word test in front of it. Um, most likely your members won't have that extra marketing in bracket showing up. And down at the bottom, we already did this earlier with the test, it looks exactly the same. Remember your pictures is the view online is what I wanted to point out. So if any reason, um, instead of downloading the pictures, they rather hit view it online, then this is what it's going to do. You can see my title field wasn't populated, so that's why it says Mr. or Mrs. Chung. So that's what it will look like in a browser. It just opens up in uh, the default browser that your member has set up. Coming back in here, what if you had started a campaign but you didn't quite finish it? You saved it and you went out for lunch. What you would do is navigate to campaigns and emails into the drafts area and you simply click on the name of the email and that will allow you to get into the edit area. Over here, you can see the last day you updated it. You can have the right arrow going down. So I'm gonna zoom out because you can't see too well. <laughs> so in here, you have the ability to edit. So instead of clicking on the name, you can also edit using the drop down here. You can copy it. You won't have this option, but you have archive. And if you recall from the other day, archive is basically delete. So if you delete it, it will go back into the so-called recycle bin in here. So you can restore it back or you can delete it permanently. So I don't need my thank you email. Let's go ahead and archive that. And you can find it when you go into your account settings and archived items. Scheduled are those that you have scheduled to go out. So I have a Friday update that goes out every week and it's gonna go out tomorrow, you can see at 10.45. Now, clicking on this one doesn't do anything. Your choices in the dropdown are a little different. Here, you can show the details. So let's show you what that is. It's just telling you the subject line, when it's going out, who it's going out to. You can see it, but you cannot change it. The other things you have here is you can preview what does it look like. Now, unfortunately, when you preview, it kicks you out of that screen. So this is the preview of it. And you have to use the left arrow to go back out. And then you also have to click the uh, schedule tab to go back to where you are. 
but you have an idea of what the email campaign is going to look like. You can duplicate it because you want to copy it and make some changes. You can also cancel the send. And when you cancel the send, it's going to say, are you sure? Because if you cancel the send, it's going to move it back into the drafts tab. So why would you cancel the send? Maybe your boss told you to use a new picture. The only way to replace the picture is to cancel it, move it into the drafts tab, do your necessary edits, and then schedule it again. And at the bottom it says yes to complete the cancel or no because you clicked on the button by mistake. So I'm going to say no because I'm going to give you another scenario. What if your boss says, Joni, I want you to send it out at 9 a.m. and not 10.45 tomorrow. It's not on this screen. I don't know why, <laughs> but you can do that task, but I need you to navigate back to the home screen that we started out. You go to the home tab. There was a little calendar on the left-hand side. Not sure if anybody noticed that earlier, but the calendar will have it highlighted in blue to represent today's date. A little dot underneath it, when you click on it, will tell you any emails um, that you sent out. You'll see the name of the email that we just did together, and this will take you to the response area. If I click on the 11th, there's the update that we were talking about, the Friday one, and here is my edit button. So here is where you have the ability to change the following. The from name, the email it's coming from, the subject line, and the time. So here I said I wanted to change this. Sorry, sync x weird here. What's going on? I'm having trouble with this lately. So let's say 8 a.m. because it's not cooperating right now. <laughs> I wanted to go out at 8 a.m. and I can go ahead and save it. So this is where you can easily change the send details for an email that has been scheduled. You cannot do it from the campaign scheduled tab. You have to do it from the home screen. So now if I save that, oh, I even chose another date by mistake. <laughs> so I accidentally put it on the 17th. So we can go back and edit. Why did I change that? There you go, the 11th. Okay, and if I go back into my campaigns now, and scheduled, you'll be able to see it says 8 a.m. instead of, what did I have, 10.45 a.m., I think. Sent only list campaigns that have ever have been sent out. So you can easily see in here and click on it. When you click on it, it's going into your reporting and similar options that we've seen. You can copy it, you can view the responses, and you can archive it. Automated our campaigns. Um, that you probably may or may not have. So some clubs have set up a automated welcome campaign. So if you want to automatically send out uh, information to welcome them to the club, you can uh, set those up if you wanted to. I don't go through that in today's webinar because it will be info overload for everybody. But in this thank you email somewhere, you can configure your automated campaigns and it tells you a little bit more of how to set up the welcome campaigns as well. So for example, if the join date is within a week, right? That way you create a new segment and it knows to sell, send them the welcome campaign, for example. Or some clubs would like to do like an automated birthday email. So if you have a birthday within the month of July, you're gonna get an email and a coupon to get a free dessert or something like that. So whatever you want um, to make those automated campaigns with, you do have the ability to set those up in these additional items that's going to be in this post training email. So the last thing I want to show you is your responses. So you've probably seen so many different ways to get into the responses at this point, the home page, the campaigns, right? Response tab at the very top, it's got its own spot and is broken down to your sent emails, your test emails, even your automated. So in here, you want to click on the June 10th one because that's the one we worked on today. You can see who it went out to and your options here are you can view it and you can archive it. When you click on the name of the campaign, it's going to show you an overview of the statistics. What I want you to uh, pay attention to right now is in the top right. This guy here is kind of nice if you want to use the save web view as PDF. So once you hit save as PDF, choose save web view as PDF, 
And what this does is it generates a unique URL for the email that we created. So for if any reason you wanted to put this campaign, because it's a newsletter, on your website as a link, you now have the URL for it. Or if you wanted to use your Outlook and uh, send this newsletter to somebody, you have the URL. And then they will see the information that went out for it. Then we have the overview. So you can see I sent it out to the trainers today. I did open it, so that statistic opened right away and updated. And the mailing score, remember, uh, highest score is 10. And you can see the open rates. If I actually clicked on something, I can click on this link to see who clicked it, etc. Okay, so this is what the campaign looks like. You can see, uh, are people opening on a desktop device or a mobile device usually? If it's a popular email client, where are they opening it from? And the campaign itself. You can go in specifically to look at the opens, the click statistics. The one you wanna be on the lookout for, of course, is your opt-outs, because those are the people that have unsubscribed. So if people have unsubscribed from this email, you wanna reach out, did you unsubscribe the newsletter by mistake, or you did you do it on purpose? And then you can use some of those steps we talked about in the other web webinar to restore them. But I want to show you something in another campaign that has a little bit more data. So give me one second here. So you can even find your campaigns by the search. And I'm going to use this one. What I want to show you is for this particular campaign, the data, because it's going to help you in placing your links in the future. So down here, it's a click map. So you can see these little dots. This is telling you where people are clicking in the campaign. So I have a hyperlink. You can see when you hover over, it indicates how many people clicked on the link. And then I have four clicks on a button. I have people clicking on pictures. So you can decide in placement in the future. Maybe instead of view website down here, it also said dining menu. You can basically see are people more attracted to the link in text or the button. Or maybe you place something up at the top and at the bottom, even though it's the exact same thing, where are people gravitating to when, uh, with your audience when they open up emails? So this will help you in designing your emails in the future. Now, how do you know who the people are that clicked on these links? That's where you would actually go to the top and click on your opens or your clicks tab to see that statistic. I'm not gonna go through every single item in here, but uh, this gives you an idea. Now, unfortunately for testing purposes, I did all the testing, but this is what I want you to be on the lookout for. It will say total clicks, so that's how many times somebody clicked on something, and one unique click is uh, the unique individual. So I clicked on links, eight times. <laughs> if you had other members clicking, then obviously it could have been seven people and eight total clicks because somebody clicked on something twice, for example, or two different links on your page. And then remember we renamed one of our links. So this is how you can easily identify. This was a dining menu link that I relabeled. So now you can see the different links that are on your page and who's clicking where. So that view website button, I clicked on that four times. But the weekly dining menu, I only clicked on it once. So ideally you wanna get more unique clicks because then you know they are different people that are clicking on it. You can export the responses. Because I'm in the clicks area right now, when I export, it'll be a CSV file, right? So it's gonna go into that export area. Remember in here we had that export? So you go into the export and you would be able to grab it. If you wanted everything, then you would land on the overview tab when you run your export. If you try to click on somebody, then it takes you into their contact information where we normally access it in the audience tab. So that's responses, lots of data in here that you can grab. So if I were to uh, export, it's just gonna ask which one I want. Do I want everything or only one of them? So let's do all of them. So same thing, just grab it in the export area or I can go into it right now. And it's pretty quick. So now I can go ahead and download it. 
if I wanted to see all the statistics. Or once I download it, I can email it to somebody else because maybe they don't have access to log in here. So you can see the zip file. And finally, I have one other statistic that I would like to share with you. And this one is more when you sent out a whole bunch of emails. It's in insights. Responses was information pertaining to one particular campaign. Insights is able to get the information for a whole bunch of them. Are you looking for a week, a month, a whole year? What time frame are you looking for? Again, I'm not going to go through every statistics here. There's just one little heat map that I, I like to share with everybody. So there's engagement, growth, trends, so many things that you can choose from. I'm going to scroll on down to this one engagement heat map. Lots of things going on in here. It's got the days of the week, Sunday to Saturday on the left. It's got 24 hours of the day on the bottom, 12 a.m. to 11 p.m. And over here, it's got uh, when are people opening? Nobody versus seven. Obviously, the numbers will adjust if you had uh, more people, but my training environment is very low. And are you looking for clicks? or send time. The campaign one only goes on Thursday. I either do it at 10 a.m. or I do it at uh, 1.30 in the afternoon. So you can kind of see why all of my opens are on Thursdays. But what this is going to do is help you figure out in the future which day of the week and what time is usually a good time for you to schedule your campaigns to go out. And then, you, yeah, you can play around with your click rates send time. So lots of different things for you to consider. Um, but that's just the one thing I wanted to share with everybody. So lots of info. I will be sending, nope, not that, this shortly. It's going to have the resources of how you can uh, manage the information that we talked about. If you do want to do the uh, automated campaigns, uh, you can follow the link here, and it will give you the instructions to do those items and the help site. There's other resources and help articles as well, but those are the ones that we're getting you started on. And if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us, our contact information or email. But if you're not uh, completely set up, you can always reach back out to your project coordinator because you want to make sure if you have that welcome campaign, for example, that uh, is in your template. So if it's missing, please let us know and we'll get those configured for you. I think that's all. Yeah, these are just uh, the things that we went through. So these are your resources, the action item, and that's the link to our help site. Hopefully this will help you all create uh, campaigns in the future easily. And uh, thanks again for your time. Have a great day and stay safe, everybody.